notice that I use the Ultimate Music Theory whiteboards all the time. As a teacher, this is as important as having a pencil and paper, and this is just a must-have for your studio. Not only have we created the large whiteboard for you as a teacher, but also the small individual whiteboards for your students. Now, there's so many ways to use the whiteboards for teaching theory concepts, such as the circle of fifths and scales and composing. The back of the whiteboard is blank, so you can use it for anything, such as the reveal game. Now, this was actually created by Sheila, and I absolutely love it. Students listen to music and then notate um, the tempo or the dynamic signs or articulation and so on on the whiteboard and then reveal their answers. <laughs> you can see how excited they are to play the game. And it's just super fun. We just make a game out of learning music theory. Now, listen as Danica uses the whiteboard with her composition before writing it down in her workbook. Well, you did a great job, Danica, writing that out on the whiteboard. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now we're going to have a little experiment. So when we're starting to do composing, um, you know, if you think about a composer the first time he plays a little tune, doesn't mean he's going to love it, right? You kind of have to experiment. But what he does is he kind of has a basic chord structure, an idea maybe where he's going to go. So I'd like you to play the functional chord symbol with the left hand and the given melody in the first two measures, and then using the uh, given harmonic roadmap, I would like you to compose the segue between the measures, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what you're going to come up with here. No wrong notes, we're just, uh, we're just experimenting. your thoughts it was okay it was okay was the uh, rhythm correct in the last second last measure no it wasn't I held my C for too long too long maybe because you were thinking well, what am I gonna put in there yes. right but that's okay that's how we start composing it's just mm -hmm. you know starting to break it down so sometimes a good idea is to record yourself playing because if it's so good <laughs> now you can't remember what you played but lucky for you we are recording this so Ooh. let's do that one more time now before you play that and compose again, I want you to play the first measure, Danica, and I want you to do something different. I would like you to play uh, the left hand four chord, so not the whole chord, but just the root um, note, and play the first measure. Let's listen to, if we play the wrong harmony, what does that sound like? Go ahead and play the first measure. clashing, right? Mm -hmm. Not good. So the harmonic roadmap really does help us map out where we're going to go. So let's do one more. Now the pressure's totally on to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> experience for everyone watching the video to say this is how we start. Mm -hmm. It's not about being perfect the first time. It's about exploring. Think about you coloring in your coloring book. You know, you don't color everything inside the lines the first time you use crayons. Mm -hmm. So let's give it one more try. You kind of have a good little map. And this time, um, it would be a good idea to think about which direction do I want to go in? How am I moving from one uh, chord tone to the next? Am I going to go by step? Am I going to go by leap? Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's finish our harmonic road map by composing, and then we'll go on to our melodic road map. Mm -hmm. All right, one more time, Danica. <laughs> experimenting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you did great. Now let's take a look at the melodic roadmap. The second step to compose in level eight is the melodic roadmap. Using the melodic roadmap, composing 
an answer phrase to a question phrase in a contrasting period in a major or minor key with the first two measures given, follow the harmonic roadmap um, to write your melodic line. Now in the first four measure phrase A, we see the first two uh, given measures and in measure three is an inversion of measure one ending with a half cadence. And in the second four measure phrase B, you can see it there, we see new melodic material and the leading tone or leading note with a step to the final tonic. So this is the melodic roadmap, and now we're going to see how all of that is put together. So this is from level 8, page 55. Now let's check into that Melody Motel <laughs> with Danica and see how she's doing when composing her contrasting period. Well now, Miss Danica, we're going down the melodic roadmap. So we had Tito helping us out with the harmonic roadmap, <laughs> and now Sola is going to help us out with the melodic roadmap. So to start with, Danica, I'm going to have you play this uh, piece. And when we are composing in a contrasting period, whether it's major or in a minor key, we have the first two measures of the given phrase, and we're going to follow the harmonic roadmap and now we're going to write the melodic line above the harmony. So I'm going to have you go ahead and play that example box. the first uh, cadence at the end of the first four measures how did you end that on an on an unstable scale degree what is an unstable scale degree an unstable scale degree is two or seven two or seven okay and then you ended it on a stable scale degree which is what eight eight it could be one, one. or eight as we say because it's still the tonic mm -hmm. right and the tonic is really sounds um, the most stable of all, isn't it? So it's a good one to use. Excellent job. So now when we're looking at our little um, Harmony uh, Hotel and Melody Motel, <laughs> what do Sola and Tito have to say about all this? When composing, use chord tones on the first beat of each chord change. Use non-chord tones, unaccented passing tones or neighbor tones to add melodic decoration, variety, and interest. Very well said. You should just be a movie star <laughs> announcer, Danica. So now can you go ahead and give me an example of that? So if you're playing this piece, what in the very first measure do we see? Is that a passing tone or is that a neighbor tone? We see both a neighbor tone and a passing okay, tone. Okay, so give me an example of that. So a neighbor tone is when we're on a chord tone, we go to a non-chord tone, and then back to our chord tone. Very good. And then our passing tone is when we're on a chord tone, and like a bridge, we go, we're trying to get back to our other chord tone, so we go from our chord tone, non-chord tone, back to our chord tone. Well done, good <laughs> job, Tedica. I think that they will be very proud of you when you're going to be performing your piece. <laughs> Wonderful.